So I stopped off in Traverse City, Michigan, because I wanted to see this building here. This is the old, it has a couple different names, but Traverse City Psychiatric Ward or the Northern Region Regional Psychiatric Hospital. It was built in the 1880s and uh, it finally shut down as a hospital in around uh, 1989, 1990. And it's really been saved, which is nice because it's an old Kirkbride building and I, I, there's not too many of them around anymore and it has such beautiful architecture. Um, now they do give tours to this place. You can even get inside the places that are not restored and that's really what I wanted to get in to see. But you have to take the tour first and then they let you kind of walk around and there's tunnels down in there. So I'm guessing we're gonna be able to get down inside the tunnels. So I really wanna see this. So where most of these beautiful old psychiatric wards and buildings are either gone for good or rotting away. They were very smart with this one. And now it's full of uh, stores and doctor's buildings and there's some restaurants in there. And it's, it's really, uh, I, it's actually, there's apartments, like high-end um, condos and everything. So now you can actually literally live in this place in some of the restored rooms, offices and things like that. At one time, I think there was something like 90 something buildings that comprised this entire property. There's an air conditioner right there. That's why it's so loud. And um, uh, that's not the case anymore. There's very few of them around. Few, few of the, there's very few of these buildings left, but obviously this is the big one. Typical Kirkbride style, really long. I think it's like a quarter of a mile long. With the, They always had a huge centerpiece, like a main entrance, and that's gone. It was deemed a fire hazard back in the 60s. And they said, hey, well, rather than just not making it a fire hazard anymore, uh, tear it down completely so we can fit some new office buildings in there. So they put some awful 1960s, no personality building there. So you don't have that beautiful Kirkbride entranceway anymore. Actually, you can see what I'm talking about straight back there. That monstrosity, that square flat roof part was never there before, but the rest of it is gorgeous and fully, oh, in this area, it's fully restored. And this is the section that is not restored. Uh, I don't know how many buildings are out here, but this is one of the bigger ones here. These Kirkbrides were all built in the mid to late 1800s, specifically really 1845 to 1910. All in all, I think about 70 of them were built throughout the country, and um, I think there's even one still in existence in Australia. Just over 30 still survive. Uh, Thomas Kirkbride, who was a psychiatrist in the 1800s, believed in the need for lots of natural light and fresh air, a much more positive environment rather than just locking these people with mental illness away, he believed in having a almost luxurious environment for them. The Kirkbride buildings are famous for very long bat wing style buildings. The first one being built in Trenton, New Jersey in 1848. And there were very specific outlines to the way these facilities were constructed and operated. In fact, the staff was to be balanced at half women and half men, typically about 70 staff members, and they all had to live either on the campus or in very close proximity. And these buildings were beautiful, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well, opulent even, full of light and fresh air, like I said you know, paintings and art on the walls, furniture. It was a nice place to be at. But unfortunately, by the turn of the century and into the early 1900s, there were massive state budget cuts, putting immense 
pressure on these hospitals for cost of upkeep and also a lot of doubt on Kirkbride's theories of curing the insane. And these factors really led to the end of the Kirkbride era. And the ones that still do exist, uh, lots of them, unfortunately, look like this now. This is Cottage 40. It was originally intended to be 22 and 24, but they had enough patients to fill it, so they joined it. It was completed in 1889, and uh, which uh, that's how fast they were, just four years after 50, which is how fast they were filling the asylums in this country. So, uh, 13 and a half foot tall ceilings, all buildings, all rooms. One of the things that allowed them was them to have a second level of windows where they twice the amount of sunlight and fresh air. None of this brick was ever left exposed. Under all of these plaster walls, this is brick. But it was too much of a hazard for the patients. So they, they, they plastered over all of them. Uh, decorative chair rail molding ran all the way around the entire ward. Uh, a stencil decorative board up near the ceiling. The ceilings were all lath and plaster. When the Mitterbees first took over here in about 2000, they bought 340 acres and all of the buildings from the state of Michigan for a dollar. They have thus far invested over $100 million into this project. They're estimating they're somewhere between 60 and 65 percent complete. These are the original 1889 wooden floor mm. It's remarkable. They're almost pristine. Uh, above you had a subfloor and a hardwood floor. This down here was all lath and plastic. So they were never exposed to the elements. They just sat there and they could find little space and age perfectly. These houses. They were only allowed to bring so many pairs of underwear, so many pairs of socks. They were given a home list, one nice set of clothes. And that nice set of clothes was set aside for the nights they had dances here. They had dances all the time. They loved having dances, especially costume balls. They actually had dances here where the staff would dress up as patients and the patients would dress up as staff. Let's not take ourselves too seriously, shall we? Here in the chapel, above us. Uh, they had one Friday out of every month, month they had a dance. They'd line the male patients up against the south wall, the female patients against the north wall. Then they rang this little bell, and the men raced across the floor to pick out their dance partner. And when they did, they had to stop, bow, and formally ask for their hand in the dance. So after the little tour, we're allowed to kind of walk around. Like I said in the beginning, this is really the only way to get into this building. You have to kind of take the tour, which is interesting anyway, because the guy's full of really great information. Much more dungeony down here though. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, everything's been cleared out. This is not typical of a, an abandoned building explorer because it's certainly not abandoned. But normally, yeah, you'd have all cool stuff in here. You gotta wonder, like, what was this? gold fire doors. This place uh, shut down in I believe late 89, possibly early 1990. I don't know when it was uh, rescued per se. I remember when we first got inside here, I was looking at that room with the interesting floor. This is uh, below it. You could see that there was like a gaping hole. Obviously there was a massive leak here and this wood is just, and the leak still exists because this stuff is rotted. But look at this. 
gorgeous. I'm glad that it's uh, to the point where it's a, uh, you know, whatever, what they, what do they call this? Uh, natural rest, nat natural uh, decay, where it's kind of oh, arrested. I think they call it arrested decay. Oh, and here's that elevator. Look at this. <laughs> 1920s. And look at the door. Imagine taking this door and somehow putting it for your house. Uh, I can't close it. But look at the construction of this thing. I don't know how tall this building is, maybe four or five stories? I don't know. I wonder if they ever checked to see what was down below the elevator. Old money or something? You know, you're pretty much on the floor here, so I'm gonna go down here. Yeah, now I'm in the elevator. Come on, look at this. Clearly this has not been restored yet. I don't want to go beyond there, but you can see the toilets and everything, the sinks. That's... But he just asked specifically that we don't walk past these yellow um, markers, so. This is, I mean, just to imagine being here when it was, uh, In operation. And then to see what it's like now is uh, crazy. Look at these, these, I mean, my favorite part, I think is just the, the doors. And I believe all this this wood, this flooring, this is all original. He talked about that a little bit on the tour. <clears throat> but open air was essential here. Air and light even the way they built this building or these buildings were positioned in a way where they got maximum morning light and then evening light in the evening. Here, look, this is those uh, those porches that I was looking at just before through the window. Can't get out there, but not a bad place. 
That's a nice breeze. He has another bathroom. I don't really understand the sink thing. I don't know if it was like a standing shower type of thing. I don't know. Because the controls are up here. So, strange. I'll have to ask the uh, tour guide about that. There you go, that's uh, Bare Bones Kirkbride Construction, their design. It's like a fancy steeple. I really wish that I had a light, I'm sorry. Well, they say it's safe up here, so. Okay. So, <laughs> this was the chamber. It was the hub for the steam pipe tunnel system. From this point, all pipes and tunnels radiated, and above us was that enormous coal burning power plant. Michigan State's got a bunch of these. Would some of you folks go right here at the bottom and just stop at that corner right there? I'm just trying to divvy up people between both sides. So. 200 feet this way, 200 feet this way. So the way you build one of these is you dig a trench. And then you get in the trench and you build what is known as a slip form out of wood. It is the size and shape of the tunnel. Then the masons get in the trench on the outside of the form and lay the brick over the top of it. As far as I've been able to tell, I believe the outside walls on this tunnel are five courses thick, so it's not going anywhere. Wow. This is the same tunnel that's in every sewer system in Europe. They've been around yeah. for millennia. 